is up, everybody? Scott the Dog Dad here from DogDadOfficial.com, and I am sitting down with Gregory Lucas, and we are going to talk about HPP foods today. I see lots and lots of people asking lots and lots of questions about this. Uh, recently, Pet Fooled slash Cole Harrington put out their uh, video about Northwest Naturals, I think is exactly what the company is called, and it raised even more questions, so I wanted to bring on somebody like Gregory, that has a lot of knowledge with this kind of stuff and on the other side of the vet table so that we can get some perspective from both sides. So hello Gregory, how are you today? Hello, I'm really good. Thanks so much for having me on. I'm so excited to be on your channel for the first time. I can't believe it's taken us this long. What the hell? I know, I agree. People have been telling me to do this and asking you to do this for months and it's just been okay. I don't just want to have him on just because. I want there to be <laughs> something specific that we're talking about that's actually yep. talked about in the community. Yeah, exactly. Something specific and something that I kind of bring up to my clients here in, my, in New Jersey at the store like all the time. We always talk about why I don't carry certain brands and why I do carry other brands, mainly because of HPP processing. So I'm totally excited to talk about this. So let's do it. <laughs> awesome. Amazing. So really quickly, it, you know, sometimes... I feel like I should just say, oh, you know who Gregory is, or oh, you know who Kimberly is, but then my brain just goes, no, you know who Kimberly and Gregory are, <laughs> because they're in your newsfeed 24 hours a day, but the other 95% of the pet parent population has no idea who you guys are. So really quick intro, who is Gregory, what's his background, where did you come from, and how'd you get where you are? Cool. I love that. So my name is Gregory Lucas. I am co-owner of Lucas and Baruby Healthy Pet Markets in Montclair, New Jersey. We're a really specialty pet store where you can come in. Number one, get educated on pet foods. Number two, have fun. And number three, just be in an environment that's supportive and encouraging and healthy for our animals because so many pet parents around the world um, look up to people that can take care of their little babies for them and teach them all the best ways of doing that. Um, I come from the world of veterinary medicine. I was, um, I was in many, many vet clinics over the last few years um, as an assistant, as teching. I was doing a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I was the pet food nutrition specialist at Holistic Pet Care here in Little Falls with Dr. Bookoff and really just spreading awareness of what pet food's about. How are we going about feeding our animals and how are they, what's the result from that? And it's huge. There's huge results, as you know, and there's so much good that that we can do and it's so easy to do and it's just a matter of letting people know and I think spreading awareness just like this little video we're doing is is it's it works wonders and it's fun right I love it I love it because sometimes again on this side of the table for the current four or five percent of us it all seems so oh yeah that's easy all that you do is pull it out of the fridge let it or pull it out of the freezer let it defrost give it the dog and you feed it right right, but, right. Getting to that point for some people is just, oh, where does the food come from? What do I get? What do I not get? Which brings us to the topic of conversation for today. So what is HPP food? So I think number one, we're dealing with pathogens and everybody's immediate response to raw food is, oh my God, you're asking me to feed raw food, but there's going to be pathogens involved. And here's where I kind of begin my conversation with Let's start with how an animal's immune system stays healthy, right? The immune system, we know 84% of it begins in the digestive system, which is their gut, right? So when they're ingesting good or bad bacteria, they're continuing to build immune strength and immunity and, and powerful, powerful elements to their whole body that's required to sustain life, right? To fight disease, to fight the bad bacteria with the good. So I think... HPP, high pressure pasteurization, is basically up to 87,000 pounds per square inch of pressure being applied with cold water basically around the package of food, making it not have any bad bacteria because they're basically killing all those pathogens. And in my opinion, denaturing protein and other good bacteria in the same process. So you have a good thing where we're getting rid of bad things, but we're denaturing and taking away the good of what a completely unadulterated raw food diet is supposed to be about in order to then keep the animal healthy. So I think it's kind of like a you have the USDA and FDA fighting and 
always causing ruckus with recalls and salmonella, <laughs> E. coli, listeria this, listeria that, and all this stuff that we see. And that's just the fear of it. And I think, I, I know that I don't like HPP, which is why none of the diets I carry here in the store um, use HPP. There is one that I would only give a patient if they're immune suppressed, if the, if the human has autoimmune issues with themselves that they need to kind of look at and be careful with bacteria. But so it's basically a situation where the existing, in almost all other cases, you know, non-threatening levels of bacteria may be threatening to that person because they do have a compromised immune system. Right. And I do like HPP because it's non-thermal. There's no real heat involved and heat, as we know, denatures so many vitamins and minerals. But again, I see every single HPP diet that's available is incorporates some form of synthetic vitamins and minerals. So what is HPP really doing? And that's what I think the question needs to be because none of the unadulterated diets that I sell have any synthetic vitamins and minerals. Right. So speak really quickly about denaturing and what that is, because there's lots of there from my perspective, at least, and this is just one perspective as a group owner, moderator, admin with like, you know, 14,000 people going back and forth about this and that. <laughs> Speak about denaturing a little bit. What exactly that means? So I think if we're thinking of anything being disrupted, I think I think it's it's identifying. Let's just take um, the protein molecule of chicken, right? Chicken is the most popular. My dog has allergies. My dog can't eat chicken. Oh my god! I'm gonna freak out. My vet said no chicken. Okay. <laughs> Now let's take that, that chicken, the healthy chicken, USDA inspected, gorgeous, delicious chicken, right? Then let's throw it into, into pressure or let's throw it into heat. Let's throw it into, let's leave it out to be exposed to oxygen. You're going to somehow degrade. I like that word a little better than denature. I like to think of degrading as it just gets less of what the quality really was. So there's, there's quality and then gets taken away and it gets taken away and it gets taken away. And then the molecule of the actual protein is now non-recognizable to the animal. And that's probably why your animal is throwing a whole immune system response to destroy the foreign invader that's now entered its body because it's not in its original state of what it's meant to do. And that it, it, it just, it, I think people need to start realizing that not all food, meat in general, whatever the meat source might be, your dog should not be responsive towards it. There's a reason why there's so much rendered protein and poor quality meats that are then denatured even further to then cause even more issues to your animal than being allergic to it. And it makes sense. It's a, the chicken's eating and growing with pro-inflammatory foods, and then you're going to feed it and then denature it and render it and do all these other crazy things to it. No wonder your dog's allergic to it. I would probably be allergic to it, and I would vomit while eating it. Right, right. So basically, if we put this into, you know, one simple statement, it would be that through one process, one process or another, the actual protein molecule itself is being changed in a way that makes it less recognizable or not recognizable at all as what it should be to the dog's body and therefore impacts the dog's body's ability to utilize it. Exactly. Okay. And then on top of that, when we have things already altered in the dog with, with health issues like immune system or dysbiosis or inflammation of the gut because of so much carbohydrates, there's, there, on top of that, on top of that, on top of that, you have all these things that are just growing and growing and growing in a negative way instead of addressing in a proactive way and then helping heal the dog. Right. Getting away from those responsive issues. It, it, but... That's, one more thing on the pile. Exactly. Okay. And, then, and then, but again, again, we're not providing those beneficial elements or digestive enzymes or proper amounts of bacteria, good bacteria, through HPP. It just completely, there's no possible way that, I guess, a lot of the FDA is stating that HPP does not take away the good bacteria. A lot of these food companies are promoting the fact that all that good bacteria is still there it's not possible. I don't see how that's possible. It's just drives me nuts. Gotcha. And so does that mean that there haven't been any actual 
studies to either confirm or deny the, the presence of that beneficial bacteria in HPP products? I don't think any company that is promoting the fact that it hasn't taken away the good bacteria, I don't think any of them have done studies. Okay. So show me the studies and then maybe answers will be different, but I, I don't buy it. I don't see how that's possible. <laughs> so with all that in mind, why do some people choose to go with HPP and are there any situations where somebody should consider HPP? Because I think we just went over a lot of reasons why people should not consider HPP. Yeah. I mean, are there any situations where they should? Certainly if the, let's just take the human for instance, if I had a, a disease that wasn't, if I wasn't capable of fighting off illness, that would be an that would be an appropriate time for me to bring into my household something that will not cause me any further disruption. That being said, no commercially available raw food diet has ever caused a human to be sick, but there's still that fear element of everything. So I think a, a good entry into raw food could be the introduction of an HPP diet. If the veterinarian isn't aware that 50% of the commercially available raw food diets are HVP and completely sterile is a nice way of introducing that even to the veterinarian who's completely against raw food because there's pathogens and it's going to kill your animal, right? It's just, there's, it, it's that whole fear thing where I think HVP calms people down. And once you kind of explain that the food you're feeding is number one, USDA inspected meat, but then they implement this step, this kill step to make it safe even though raw unadulterated food is safe um <laughs> you're still it's just uh, i think it's just the whole fear aspect you got to chill people out before they begin to be receptive um for some some people are immediately receptive to the non-hpp diets and but you got to take things slow for some people and i think that's a great thing and i mean even animals that have let's just say animals ripped open they had gut surgery they they can't have any bacteria floating around in the gut right after for the next two weeks after surgery they're on antibiotics or all the all these things there's there's a benefit to feeding a sterile food in that regard because you're you're preventing the animal from potentially being unable to fight off pathogens when they are there any from being on the other side of the vet table, are there any conditions, diseases, circumstances where that same type of immune system that is lacking may be present in a dog where well, that's appropriate? Dogs, dogs that are that are going that have dysbiosis or they are unable to digest foods properly with IBD or something like that, where they where they can't really their body can't focus on getting rid of those bad pathogens because there aren't enough good things to, to utilize in their body already. So it's, it's, let's build that back to normal. Let's, let's do certain protocols to, to heal the dysbiosis, which is that leaky gut syndrome. And then maybe let's introduce a food that is an HPP. And I think they do tremendous, but yes, some animals belong on an HPP diet if there are other underlying factors. And that's what I, I mean, yeah, you come into the store, we say, hey, what's going on? What do you currently do? Are there any issues? And if there aren't, we go for it. And if there are, like I said, I don't like to admit we carry an HPP diet, but we do um, <laughs> in very limited amounts. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. But. <laughs> so one of the big questions, one of the big questions, because the one that I see the most commonly, as far as, you know, discussions or I guess more accurately, we'll call them arguments in yeah. rock groups about how people say, you know, it, it's just simple physics, you know, pressure causes heat, et cetera, et cetera. So do you think, and do you consider, and when somebody asks you, is HPP still raw food? No. <laughs> Why That's, is that? And yes, it's, it's not cooked. There's no quote unquote, processing but there is hpp is a process therefore it is processed and people that just don't understand that simple logic it's 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 a form of processing and it might not be a form of cooking or or, or uh, extrusion or whatever it may be baking however food is made in the pet food industry i don't think it should be labeled raw because we are doing something to alter the state of the food so 
it is not raw. Sorry. But basically because of the fact that it has gone through a process before it gets to market, <laughs> other than just being, you know, like ground together with other ingredients, that we can't consider it raw because it has been processed. Right. And in my opinion, raw foods have those natural enzymes, those good bacteria, the sometimes bad bacteria. But as we know, dogs and kitties have a totally different digestive system than we do. They yeah. have a totally different acidic level than we do, creating them to be able to digest and assimilate the foods that they were meant to eat. Yeah, the more that I learn about the microbiome, the more that that becomes overwhelmingly and abundantly apparent about, you know, certain pathogens being um, absorbed in certain areas and certain things are present and certain immune functions not being able to happen properly. It's just, yeah. whew, it's mind blowing. <laughs> totally and when you really look into it, it's, it's extraordinary. And most veterinarians don't even... Oh, your animal has IBD. Let's throw steroids. Oh, your animal is an a your dog has acute diarrhea all the time. Why is that happening? Why do we have allergies? Why is your dog allergic to this food? Let's just throw some more crap into its body and expect them to be healthy. And we know that's not possible until we address the root cause. So totally there's the element of being proactive and proactive veterinarians are very few and there needs to be more. Just saying. All right. I have two more questions and then we can wrap up here. And I think I'm going to save the big one for last. But if we weren't having one more question after this, <laughs> would you have any other final thoughts or philosophies or things that you would want somebody considering HPP to think about, know, consider that you haven't already gone through? I think bringing up the fact that HPP is done because people are fearful, the FDA is fearful of people becoming sick. And I think we have to address it, we have to look, kind of look at it a different way of saying, did you know dry food has more recalls for Salmonella E. coli listeria than raw food because you're taking rendered poor quality disease roadkill from rendering facilities, bringing it to pet food companies, then putting it into food and it's not gonna be HPP'd. Why is that food not HPP'd? But then the fresh USDA inspected, grass fed, incredible meats going into raw food is the stuff that's feared and hated by the veterinary community. It doesn't really make much sense. So that's just a point I like to throw out there. Um, look at the quality of meat before we start freaking out. And it just, it's mind boggling when you look at the numbers of recalls that happen on dry food products versus raw food products. People have, doc there are documented cases of human pathogen exposure from dry foods, but there's zero from anything commercially available in the raw freezers that you can see. So, <laughs> I love it, I love it. I actually yesterday published a video here on the channel about raw food recalls and you know how people should handle them, what questions they should ask. And it's, you know, basically to sum it up, it says, you know, are there really, is this recall happening because somebody at, or, you know, several people are actually reporting issues or could it possibly be that maybe somebody, some certain organizations are being biased towards certain companies for the sake like, of profit? Why are there so many recalls currently on raw food diets? Because there's some sneaky, sketchy stuff going on in our little industry, and I ain't happy about it. But it's, yeah, we, we won't go all tinfoil hat. We'll, just, <laughs> we'll, just, we'll leave it at that and let you guys do your own research on that one. <laughs> All right, so the big question to end us off and then we will close out um, and we'll let people know where they can find you um, is, in your opinion, yeah. is HPP, is feeding HPP better than providing other commercially available dog foods like kibble or canned food? One million percent yes. One million percent yes. I love it. Actually, some of the raw food diets that, I mean, sorry, the dry food diets on market today are adding in probiotics and adding in different things that raw food HPP diets don't necessarily have. But HPP diets, in my opinion, are 20 million times better because they are freshly sourced meats. They're not those rendered crappy things you'd see. They don't go through the extreme amounts of heat creating carcinogenic byproducts. There's not a lot of there's no moisture in dry diets. There's a ton of moisture in, 
in an H repeat raw food diet. So there's there are many many beneficial elements to obviously a, an H repeat raw food diet. And then of course we can add in probiotics. We can add in digestive enzymes. We can add in a lot of good on top of the already good versus the actual crap that you'd find in a in a bag sitting on a shelf, not in a freezer. So there's yes, it is. 20 million times better than any other variety of food that you'd find at a pet store. I love it. And I wanted to end with that question because I think that it sounds like if you just watched this video and then didn't get to that question, <laughs> it did sound like a big HPP bash fest. But <laughs> I don't think that that, at least that definitely wasn't my intention. And I don't think that it was Gregory's intention at all, but I don't think in my opinion, and maybe Gregory disagrees, but I highly doubt that he does that if you are a pet parent that is feeding HPP because for whatever reason or another, if it's not some kind of autoimmune issue with you or your dog, if you're feeding HPP because you just can't get over the scare tactic fear stuff, then you are still doing a better job than scooping Purina or Imes out of a bag. Oxidized rancid fats out of a bag, I like to say. <laughs> and so on and so on. <laughs> yes. So where can people find you, Gregory? Where can they follow you? Where they, can they see your videos, your stuff, your store, everything? Uh, so you can follow me. All my handles are at Gregory Lucas, G-R-E-G-O-R-I-L-U-K-A-S. Um, my store is Lucas and Berube, L-U-K-A-S, B-E-R-U-B-E, -E, Healthy Pet Markets, um, uh, lucasandberube.com. We're in Montclair, New Jersey, 15 South Fullerton Ave. Come by and say what's up. Awesome. I love it. I just it. realized this is actually the first time we're actually speaking to each other. Yes, it is. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like we've been friends for a long time. <laughs> well, I think that that's Kim's fault. I realized the other day that Kimberly has kind of been my like <laughs> gateway drug into the cool kids club. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, and you can hear my dogs in the background now. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and disconnect us. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll make sure to put links to all of Gregory's stuff down below, whether you're watching this on Facebook or you're watching it on YouTube, it'll be all over the place. So thank you guys so much for coming by and yeah, go and follow Gregory. Peace. Bye. Peace. Dude.